Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the president of Pepperdine University, Andrew K. Benton. I'm delighted to join you tonight for the uh, second Waves of Innovation competition. If last year is um, an indicator, tonight's going to be a lot of a lot of fun, very informative, a lot of enthusiastic um, contestants, applicants, and I just know that it's going to be, as I say, a lot of fun. I was with, uh, yesterday in Washington, D.C., I was with um, the, the editorial board of the Chronicle of Higher Education. And at a certain point in our conversation, they got around to asking, so where are the new uh, ideas in higher education? Where are the new opportunities? And this competition gave me a chance to talk about this idea. And I told them about our business plan competitions. I told them about Real Stories Film Festival and a lot of innovation on this campus. Uh, with all due respect to my senior administrative colleagues who are here this evening, I think they would agree with me when I say that the best ideas, the best ideas are coming from our students, from our faculty, and from our staff. And you're going to see some of our best ideas on display this evening. I'm glad you are here. I'm glad that you are here to be enthusiastically supportive of those who have put their ideas forward for our consideration. So welcome and uh, let's enjoy a great evening together. Now, I can't go any farther without saying this would not be possible without uh, Dr. Lee Katz, um, my colleague in administration at this place. He, um, he's put together a great evening together with Ross and others. He's put together a great evening and uh, it wouldn't happen without uh, without his insight, without his intellect, and without his commitment to making this the outstanding event that uh, we, we expect. So welcome, Dr. Lee Katz. Well, thank you. Let me add my welcome to uh, this, the second uh, wave of innovation talks. Our university, has a long history of making bold entrepreneurial decisions. They range from a move to Malibu, to starting new schools, to creating new innovative academic programs long before some of our other local universities. The Waves of Innovation has been a wonderful creation of the president, as he mentioned, to create energy and excitement and enthusiasm from the community so that the community can be participants in this entrepreneurial tradition. As you remember last year, you may remember last year, six groups were awarded funding in the first ever Waves of Competition. Already we're seeing the fruits of those awards. We're seeing new collaborations with external constituents. We're seeing new collaborations with other universities. We're seeing New collaborations even within our own school, within departments and within programs. External grant proposals have been uh, submitted from awards last year, and the list is much longer. Let me just quickly review how we've gotten to this point tonight. The community responded with enthusiasm to this second call. Over 90 applications were received. The committee you see on the back of the page reviewed over 300 pages of documents as they reviewed these applications. And working closely with the president, they chose the six phase one winners that you're gonna see tonight. Let me introduce the committee uh, briefly. Um, it's on the back of your program, but I think it's worth uh, mentioning the members of this committee. Uh, Alan Beard, an alum, is on the committee, CEO of McBeard Media, Luisa Blanco, Associate Professor of School of Public Policy, Rebecca Carson, Managing Director of this center, Clark Cashin, student from Seaver College, Brad Fornicieri, President Lighthouse Branding, Marnie Mitzi from the President's Office, Barry McDonald, the School of Law, Dan Morrison, who you're gonna hear from more to later tonight, Sasha Stillman, a student, School of Law, and Dean Michael Williams from the Grazie Dieu School of Business. Would the members of the committee that are here tonight please stand and let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Finally, let me uh, briefly describe how we're going to unfold tonight. Uh, the six presenters uh, will give brief presentations in the order that you see in the program. Each will be uh, introduced by an announcer. After the last presenter is finished, 
uh, Professor Dan Morrison, as I mentioned, from Seaver College and a member of the committee, will briefly describe how you might be able to participate uh, in this evening's uh, event. Um, I also heard that the word is leaking out how these participations occur, and I'm hearing there are strategies, and I heard one uh, supporter of one of the speakers tonight mention uh, outside that he personally brought 12 cell phones tonight to <laughs> participate in this. After you participate in this event, uh, there will be a brief intermission where the Waves of Innovation Committee will be providing President Benton their rankings of the six proposals. Dr. Benton will compare his own evaluations of the proposals with those of the committee, and final decisions on funding will be made at the end of the evening. This is gonna move along quickly, and I'm almost finished. Uh, so the bottom line is this. By the end of the evening, we will know which of these six presenters will receive awards. Now, I should remind you that this has been a lot of work for this group. They had to submit an initial application, then they had to submit a detailed proposal and a detailed budget, and then they had to work on this presentation that you're about to hear. So I just encourage you that when they complete their very brief wit talk, uh, that if you've uh, enjoyed it, uh, please give them a round of, of applause. So without further delay, uh, let's hear from this year's Wave of Innovation presenters. Summer Success Series, presented by Brian Barrio and Lauren Reed. Good evening, my name is Brian Barrio, Associate Director of Athletics, and I'm here tonight with Lauren Reed, one of our athletics academic coordinators, to talk to you a little bit about our Waves of Innovation proposal, the Summer Success Series. The Summer Success Series is a summer acclimatization program aimed at helping student athletes make the transition successfully from high school or from their previous in, uh, ac academic institution to college life here at Pepperdine. As everybody in this room knows, that's a difficult transition under the best of circumstances. However, for student athletes, it's even more challenging. Student athletes, once school starts, will be expected to spend up to 20 hours or more a week on athletics activities. For that reason, we think it's extremely important that we do everything we can to assist them in making this transition successfully and in uh, <clears throat> having an enriching academic experience at Pepperdine that ends in graduation. Further, the NCAA over the last 10 years has been continually increasing its academic standards. And it's important, it's critical that Pepperdine continue to meet and to exceed those standards. Pepperdine Athletics sees this school as the Stanford, the Vanderbilt, the Northwestern of the West Coast Conference. This institution is both more academically selective and more academically rigorous than the schools against which we're competing. And for that reason, we think we need to be innovative and take, take the lead in the conference in providing academic support and help with personal development to our student athletes. To that end, last year we rolled out the pilot program of the Summer Success Series. And Lauren was involved closely in that last summer, so she's gonna tell you more of the details from last summer's program. Lauren? Thank you, Brian. Our 2014 pilot program consisted of four workshops for our men's and women's basketball teams. In our first workshop, we introduced our student athletes to a local learning specialist who taught them college level um, study skills and engaging them in the university environment here at Pepperdine. In our second workshop, our student athletes had the chance to hear from our faculty here at Pepperdine and truly gain an understanding of the importance of the faculty-student relationship so unique and special to Pepperdine University. And in our third session, we had a visitor from the University Counseling Center speak to our student athletes about the psychological and the emotional impact of the student athlete experience and how important it is to manage that while here at Pepperdine. And in our fourth and final session with our student athletes, the student athletes had the opportunity to hear directly from people who were once in their shoes in our student athlete alumni forum. In the forum, the student athletes heard from people who once did exactly what they did, and they had the chance to ask them candid questions about their transition from high school to college. Some of the alumni even spoke candidly about their transition and things they would have done differently here at Pepperdine. 
Now, we would have loved to have all of our participants in the 2014 program here today to speak to you to share what they went through. But they're currently warming up to take on and beat the BYU Cougars down in the gym. <laughs> So we've prepared a video to share with you all so you can hear directly from our students and participants. So here's a video, please enjoy. When I came and spoke to the men and women's basketball teams, the advice that I gave them, I, I tried to be as open as I possibly could. You want that honesty and more than anything, I was telling them that they are right now given the opportunity. And this, is, this is big time college athletics. You should fully take advantage of everything that the university is offering you. My role in the Freshman Success Series involved talking with student athletes before they get to Pepperdine, they're here for the summer, and giving them an idea of what it's like to be a student. When we come to university, we have to figure out time management, we have to understand uh, classes, and now what is going to be required of you as a student athlete, whereas in high school, it was a lot smaller, and now you're growing up. There are different things that you have to deal with, and not only is it important for the basketball player, but it's in, it is very important for every single student athlete to understand the dynamic of what they're coming into in university life. The program would have definitely benefited me if I did it before I got here, just because um, when I did do the program my sophomore year, it just completely made me see things differently and how, like, I can't take things for granted. When I got to Pepperdine, as all freshmen do, you don't really know what to expect. Um, coming out of high school, there's a lot of questions. You don't really know how college is going to be um, with professors and athletically. It was just good to get my questions answered and not go into my first year you know, of college with a bunch of unknown. It's hard to ask a student athlete to um, go out and, and gather all these resources um, by themselves. It's, it's much more effective to say, hey, here's a program, this is how it works, we'll take you through the process, this is how you can succeed and, and really equip them with the right tools to do it. Giving them a leg up and letting them see what the academic side is like first before athletics impinges on their time is crucial so they can uh, be ready to participate in both. When I got into the program, it was something that really helped me cope with all the things going on. These professionals, these people who are really doing something with their life, and we can, we can do it too. We can one day be there. This needs to be done for all of our student athletes because coming in as a new student, there, there's so much going on. You really just need that extra tool to help you be successful. I think it's really important for students to understand the importance of education because sports won't always be there forever. Even if you go to the pros, like there's some point where you'll end. And so the importance of education is always there. I think um, a grant like this is absolutely necessary for Pepperdine because I want to see other student athletes have the same kind of success that I had as a former valedictorian. They're able to hear certain advice from not just graduate students that were just students at Pepperdine, but student athletes who went through exactly what they're going through. I think if we could get our student athletes more well-rounded in this way, and other schools are already doing this, it's just something else to put under the, the cachet of Pepperdine that is already so huge. Now we're taking the student athlete and then we're ingratiating them into Pepperdine University before they even hit the campus. So now they're hitting the ground running. My fall semester, I really think I pushed myself. And if I hadn't had someone tell me that, I'm not sure what would have happened. It's helped me a lot this year. Without this program, I would honestly have been lost. They give you the insight on, on everything that goes on for, the, for your first year. And then you know, from there on, you, know, you have your own idea of what you need to do and how to be successful. At the end of the day, that's all that's going to matter is how successful you can be. We think the words of last year's participants speak volumes about how effective this program could be. With Waves of Innovation funding, we would expand the program to include additional teams and additional at-risk student-athletes. Further, we would be able to use outside facilitators from outside our geographic area, bringing in individuals who have experience working with student athletes and working with at-risk students at other Division I institutions. 
And finally, we'd incorporate an off-campus element to the program, which would include both community service as well as a cultural outing. This would give us a chance to get faculty and staff together with the student athletes and engage those student athletes before they start full-time at Pepperdine in our spirit of community and service. We thank you for your continued support of Pepperdine Athletics and for your consideration of the Summer Success Series. Thank you. Anchor Course, presented by Dusty Breeding and Laura Kalinkowitz. Welcome everybody, my name is Laura Kalinkowitz and I am the Director of Admission at Seaver College and for the past eight years I have had the distinct pleasure of helping students find their right match with Pepperdine. And my name is Dusty Breeding. I'm one of the campus and youth ministers here uh, for the University Church of Christ on campus at Pepperdine. Uh, for about the past 10 years or so, I've been involved in student ministry of various sorts with teens or college students. Uh, and my work with students have given me, has given me the opportunity uh, to meet amazing young people like Ben Lee. Uh, ben Lee is a junior right now at Malibu High School. Um, and Ben is a unique uh, guy. Ben is, um, he's, he's very strong academically. Uh, but yet he balances this, this strength with academics uh, with an interest in sports. He's a soccer player at Malibu High School. Uh, in addition to soccer and academics, he's also actively involved in the University Church of Christ Youth Group. Uh, so Ben's time is full of service, uh, of learning, um, of activity. Uh, ben has also led and been a part of mission trips uh, internationally. Um, so Ben is a unique student um, and the type of student that we really want here at Pepperdine University. But unfortunately, there are a lot of universities that want guys like Ben. So Ben is going to be looking at Stanford, he's going to be looking at UCLA, Boston, some of these other elite universities around the United States uh, as a potential student there. So my question for you is, what is Pepperdine doing to attract the Ben Lees to our place? Well, we've got an idea for you, and we're going to share it uh, tonight. It's something we call the Anchor Course. Uh, an anchor is a symbol of strength. It's a symbol of steadiness uh, in a storm. It grounds a ship to a firm foundation to keep it from drifting. Now for myself, and maybe many of you, Pepperdine was that anchor during my time in college. But for guys like Ben or other students who have not yet experienced Pepperdine, they don't know if Pepperdine could be uh, a place for them. They come into uh, the college search uh, unsure, a little wary of, of what the school will be like. Would they be a good fit for the university? Will the university challenge them academically? Will it challenge them spiritually, but also provide a safe environment for them to grow uh, without being too uh, tested in their faith? So these are all questions that students don't really know the answer to until they arrive at new student orientation. Um, and for some, that's too late because they've chosen to go elsewhere. So what if we had the opportunity to give students a taste of what it means to be a wave here at Pepperdine? What if we were able to introduce them to our unique combination of faith and academics? What if we were able to introduce them to the best thing that Pepperdine offers, its people, before they drift off to another university? Well, we think that Anchor Course does this. Through the Anchor Course, mission fit students uh, would see that Pepperdine is a great place to lower their anchor. This high impact experience will root them uh, in an amazing community of people who seek God and education. So you are probably asking yourself, what is Anchor Course? Oh, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> we think that Pepperdine is uniquely positioned to offer a three-week summer abroad program for current high school uh, juniors, and it's unlike any program available in the United States. So the program will consist of one week in Malibu, uh, where the students like Ben would live on campus uh, during their junior year, in between junior and high, uh, senior year of high school. They would spend a week in studies, uh, and they would also have the opportunity to experience this community, uh, to meet faculty, staff members, with some students that are around for the summer as well, to really kind of envision themselves as a future wave. After their first week at Pepperdine, the students would fly from Los Angeles to one of our international program houses, uh, either Fiji or Lausanne, two potential locations. During their time abroad, they would continue their studies in which they're earning academic credit uh, that is for Pepperdine University. They'd spend their time uh, traveling in the city, uh, learning about culture, learning about faith, 
uh, earning this academic credit uh, in, a, in a very unique experience that connects them uh, to our university. The conversations, experiences the students will engage in, we believe are key to envisioning their identity as a future Pepperdine wave. The Anchor course will introduce them to a blend of faith uh, and academics that Pepperdine is internationally known for, and I think we're the best at. This combination of intense classroom study and intentional faith development through our spiritual life programs uh, set us apart, and we believe that the Anchor course will show this. So a, a question you may also be having is, you know, who, who's coming? Who, who's going to be a part of Anchor course? Well, uh, we're pitching the idea that the, the first cohort would be 15 students who are mission fit for the university. And what we mean by that are these are, these are students who are highly uh, academically qualified to be students here. Um, but they also have the component of faith uh, that would set them apart. Uh, we'll be targeting Christians specifically from our, our church's tradition here, our Pepperdine's tradition within the Churches of Christ, uh, to draw in students uh, who may be academically qualified enough to go to other schools, uh, but they, they want that faith element to their learning uh, as well. Uh, essentially, anchor course candidates are the future leaders of Pepperdine and hopefully the future leaders uh, of the world as well. Based on our research, Laura and I had the opportunity to spend some time with some focus groups uh, over the past few weeks as we've been planning and prepping for this. And from talking with parents and the students themselves, we've learned that students are seeking this out and some of them are going elsewhere for something similar. Sure. I think one of the unique things about Anchor Course is that many students are seeking summer college credit opportunities and many universities, elite universities and peer universities do offer those experiences, but often that choice is at odds with doing some sort of international experience, a mission trip or something like that. And Anchor Course really uh, enables students to not have to choose between the two of those things. Um, additionally, Anchor Course, we think, would be a strong investment on the university's behalf uh, because it really aligns well with our strategic plan and the strategic goals that we've set for, for bringing Pepperdine forward. Uh, when we think of the strategic plan, the first goal, advancing student learning and scholarship, uh, Seaver College has a unique academic culture, and many students that I work with in my admission capacity uh, seem as if they don't quite know how to be prepared for the rigor of Seaver. Anchor Course would engage and prepare students uh, in the critical things Thinking, the discussion, the integration of faith and learning that our curricular rigor um, and instruction demands. When it comes to strengthening our commitment to our faith mission uh, by really targeting Christian students from the restoration movement, um, we really would be embracing students who, who may not uh, necessarily be seeking a Christian education because they're looking for an elite experience. Um, I often work with students who express some hesitation when it comes to how Christian is Pepperdine, uh, and it's kind of hard to explain this, and I generally invite students to come experience our community for themselves to understand how we hold faith and learning in tandem. Uh, Anchor Course would allow highly achieving, highly competitive academic students who may not believe a Christian school can deliver the rigor that they're looking for to engage in a Religion 301 class, Christianity and culture, um, and really uniquely experience what Seaver has to offer when it comes to those kinds of questions of deep exploration. Uh, one thing that we've learned from, from working at Seaver is that students who are involved in affinity groups such as Greek life, international programs, posse, athletic teams, uh, fine arts majors, or even students through their residence hall community their first years tend to have what we call a higher institutional commitment. They're, they have a sense of belonging. Uh, we believe that by fostering that their junior year before even applying, uh, students who are admitted to Anchor Course and who enroll at Seaver would really um, have that sense of belonging as they start their four years here and that that commitment would be enduring um, even after they graduate. Finally, diversity is something that I've learned in my tenure in admission doesn't just happen. Uh, through deliberate selective recruitment processes, we are committed to crafting cohorts of anchor course students uh, who really represent diverse perspectives. We want to include students from many different Christian faith traditions, uh, from many cultural, racial, geographic backgrounds to foster a critical learning environment for those three weeks that they're here on campus. Uh, we think that peers who challenge each other and challenge their assumptions facilitate higher learning, not only in the anchor course program, but also once they enroll here um, at Seaver. 
And then finally, uh, we really believe that the, the unique marrying of an international experience and college credit is unoccupied space in the higher education landscape right now. Uh, and we think that Anchor Course will help Pepperdine claim um, a truly global experience and a truly global reputation by offering students a unique opportunity. Um, I think it's a great solution for our brightest, best mission fit students. To launch Anchor Course, we've requested a grant of around $85,000, which covers the initial startup cost for the first year of the program. Uh, now, based on the fee that would be passed on to students of $56.50, uh, that would mean that within the first year of Anchor Course's existence, uh, it would be completely self-sustaining. Uh, not only is it self-sustaining, uh, but it's actually revenue generating. So by the time that we have four years of Anchor Course in effect, so we have freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors who've all enrolled at Pepperdine from the Anchor Course program, uh, we estimate with a 90% conversion rate, so 90% of the students who participate in Anchor Course we think will actually enroll at Seaver, uh, given tuition discounting averages and forecasted tuition increases, Anchor Course will be bringing in about $2.2 .2 million in net tuition revenue uh, through student enrollment each year. Teens are more globally minded uh, than they've ever been before. Now if you know Ben or uh, anyone like Ben, you know that to be true. Pepperdine must challenge these next generation leaders uh, with creative ideas, um, creative experiences like Anchor Course if we want to keep them and bring them here. Um, these teens want their faith to be tested. Uh, they want to be pushed academically. But they want to do it alongside their peers, and they also want the safety net of a Christian environment to do that. And we think we offer that through Anchor Course. No other school is doing something as cutting edge as Anchor Course. And we believe that Anchor Course launches us ahead of the crowd and into the foreground of education. Hebrews 6.19 reminds us of God's promise to Abraham and its fulfillment in Christ by saying this. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. We believe that this will be uh, the future of Pepperdine students here. We'll anchor them here through Anchor Course, both, both physically uh, and spiritually firm and secure. Thank you. Business Issue Analysis Competition. Presented by Bin Lo. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my proposal is called Business Analysis uh, Issue Analysis Conversation. Sorry. From a business perspective, person will be much better off if they have two types of partners lawyers and experts in public relations because for a business for a company someone need to deal with law and regulation and someone need to deal with relationship between um, companies and other parties so my first goal is build up a platform for students in business law and public relations to uh, to build up their partnership Students no, no longer study isolatedly, and we help them break the boundary of schools, help them come together, work together, and develop their partnership. They might develop it and enhance it, and they will be each other's crucial partners in the future. The second goal is to help Pepperdine and companies enhance their connections. I imagine Pepperdine can work as a consultant firm. We have brilliant people <laughs> and company come to us, bring up their problem and their perspective for their future. And in a re uh, reciprocal way, students can have great chances to deal with the real cases in business and the company can get new ideas for their future. My third goal is enhance reputations of Pepperdine University. If we talk to people like um, Pepperdine have brilliant people in business, people may doubt that.
but what if people around them tell them so? Look at the map of Los Angeles. If hundreds of local businesses say Pepperdine is the best, <laughs> we build up our reputation. Um, let's see how the competition works. Uh, the judges consist of two groups of people. The first group is the representative of the local business. They provide their, um, their current issue or their operation problem or their future uh, perspective. And the judges of the three professors, which are um, on behalf of business, law, and public, uh, public relations, and they might provide instructions and suggestions for the students. The participants are students from Graduate School of Business and Management, School, and School of Law, and School of Public Policy, and Silver College, as long as the students are dealt with in, in business, in law, and public relations. And so far, I just mentioned public relations, but it seems we don't have a School of Public Relations, but we have School of Public Policy. I strongly recommend students from School of Public Policy because I talk to some of my friends and, look, I, and I read their schedule. They, they learn history, they learn um, economy, metrics, social policy, and strategies. They have a broad side of the world and they have potential, they are versatile. So <clears throat> once the team once the team is formed and they have two months to produce their proposal and the top three will be selected and the top three will uh, present their whole ideas in the campus-wide pre uh, uh, presentations and the company will pick up the best for further co cooperations. And what do you think about further cooperation? It means recruitment. If the proposal satisfies the company the company, if they're happy, they might say, I like your team, and come to work with us. Or in some case, they might hire some specific person. Because remember, everyone is unique, and everyone must be outstanding. Although you work in a team, but you cannot finish your partner's work, um, say, I know I cannot hire a five-year trial as an employee, but I really don't know it belongs which law. So everyone is, is the one, and everyone is the only expert in their area. And somebody made questions, are we capable to deal with this? I never doubt that our potentials. What I consider is, whether we have a chance. We just need a chance. And if we got a chance, if we got a chance, we can help students build up their partnership. It's not just with, the, with their teammates. It's probably their teammates, the roommates, or friends, or their uh, professor, or some people in their area. Because I have to emphasize this. We, get people from different major, from business, from public policy, from law. They get involved and they build up their partnership. And um, the next big thing is the university can build up their reputation. I strongly recommend that we put all the best proposal in the database and we open access to the companies. So if the companies come to us, they can see how brilliant work we did and that may help us attract more co cooperation with, further, uh, with potential companies. This is my budget, and the actual spending may be exceeds this amount, but I can say the benefits from this competition must much outweigh the cost we spent. And besides, if we really build up a good competition and we come up with high quality proposal, suggestions for the uh, companies. Company will support us. So I, um, I wish Pepperdine is getting better and better. Thank you.
The Financial Literacy Initiative, presented by Derek Stoutland. So raise your hands if you've ever wondered about or worried about money. OK, so take a good look at the people around you who are not raising their hands. Because they're either doing something illegal, or they know something that we need to catch on to. So hi, everyone. My name is Derek Stoutland. I'm currently a senior here at Seaver College and a budget analyst in the Office of Financial Planning here at Pepperdine. And I'm really excited to share with you all something that's had a huge impact on my life over the past few years and something that I would uh, think that Pe uh, Pepperdine students can benefit from in a pretty phenomenal way. But first things first, we're going to start off with a short video. Money. A word that makes some flinch while others leap out of their seats in excitement. Throughout history, money has been used as a tool for destruction and for greatness. It has been the underlying cause of war and of broken families. However, money has also been involved in some of the greatest discoveries and advancements in the history of mankind. The most fascinating truth about money is that no matter how much we have or don't have, we all personally manage it every single day. It's the quarter of a second transaction that is made for every $5 extra hot non-fat triple espresso Starbucks in the morning. It's the number that hits your bank account when you receive your year-end bonus to be splurged on an exotic vacation or newest consumer product. So, why does any of this matter? The truth is, today, 77% of Americans report having financial stress, and only 40% have any kind of spending or investment plan. Relating to higher education, the class of 2014 hit record highs this year with an average graduating student loan debt amount of $33,000 with Pepperdine close behind at 29,000. Millennials are expected to see massive population increase, live longer, and consume more than ever before. Among couples, there's a 50% chance that one spouse will live to be 92 years old, and a 25% chance that one will live to be 97. That's a lot more time and a lot more money needed than ever before. So the second question, what if Pepperdine University was a catalyst for change? What if every student at Pepperdine realized that they had the opportunity to create a current and post-graduation budget that breaks down income, expenses, taxes, retirement investments, and charitable giving? What if every student could establish their own financial life plan styled to their own short and long-term life goals? Instead of a post-grad shopping spree, what if a student decided to buy their first house immediately after graduation, or even open up a savings account so that their children could go to college in 20 years? The point is this, yes, money will always be abused, mishandled, and misunderstood. But we as an institution dedicated to innovative action can change this understanding, even if it's just a few students at a time. Instead of viewing money as a means to an end, we should think of it as a sustainable tool for influence. And with influence comes great responsibility. So when I walk across the stage at graduation this upcoming year, my classmates and I are going to be opened up to an entire new world of endless possibilities. I'm also going to be one of 70% of American students graduating with over $25,000 in student loan debt. Over the past two months, our team has had the opportunity to interview with CFOs, wealth managers, and current Pepperdine students. We've also taken a look at the best softwares, literature, and resources all relating to money management. So over the next few minutes, we're going to talk about the three steps that make up this project. The first will be the three-step implementation process that makes up the Financial Literacy Initiative. The second will be the sustainability model. And the third will be the, uh, the timeline and the year-by-year -year walkthrough of deliverables and action plans. So let's get started. So the Financial Literacy Initiative can be made up of three main steps. The first is a first-year seminar course. And the second is a personal finance BA320 elective course. And the third is the establishment of Pepperdine's very own Office of Financial Literacy. So let's take a look at these in a little bit more detail. So step one is to establish Pepperdine's very own first year seminar course for incoming Pepperdine students interested in learning about money management. So the foundation of this course is to teach life topics that all students are going to be dealing with uh, after graduation for the rest of their lives. It's going to talk about budgeting, student loans, investing, uh, putting a down payment on a home, the list goes on. The course will also include guest lectures 
from, our, from wealth managers as well as our current uh, Pepperdine uh, CFO here, Paul Lasseter. The point of this course is to wrap it within the mission of uh, purpose, service, and leadership and talk about how that relates to money management. So step two. Step two is to establish BA320, which is Pepperdine's personal finance elective course. And the good news is that this course already does exist. It just hasn't been offered since the spring of 2011 due to funding and marketing issues. So as you might guess, this course will cover a little bit more of an in-depth analysis on um, budgeting and investing as would the first year seminar course in just a more thorough manner. An interesting point on this is that Abilene Christian University, which is one of Pepperdine's sister schools, has actually created this exact program into one of their most popular courses on campus, enrolling over 100 students each semester. So last but not least, we have step three, and that is to establish Pepperdine's very own Office of Financial Literacy. So this office will initially be made up of a single staff member who's available to meet with students for one-on-one -on -one coaching and personal finance. And the curriculum for this um, course will ultimately be wrapped into this concept of a financial life plan that students can go through, and it'll be kind of a living document. So students can uh, create it when they're in college, update it upon graduation, and use it for the rest of their lives. So it'll include a personalized budget, a personalized investment plan, as well as um, short and long-term goals that are catered to that student's needs. So what about the sustainability of this project? So the tuition revenue from each of these courses will ultimately fund the Office of Financial Literacy, its salaries, and other expenses involved. If the uh, program is successful at Seaver, we would love to offer it to the graduate campuses affiliated with Pepperdine as well. So now let's look at a year-by-year -year timeline breakdown for the program. So in year one, we would love to offer both courses, um, first-year seminar in the, in the fall and personal finance elective in the spring. That would allow us in year two to offer both courses and open up the financial literacy office to students for personalized coaching. In year three, we'd like to take a step back and assess the progress of the program thus far and see what we would, li we would like to do with it in the future. We would also like to publish a per uh, case study based on the experience that we've had over the past two years and, um, and to be used for, by other schools who would like to create their own personal, personal finance courses on their campuses. By the end of this program, Hundreds of students will have gone through personalized coaching in personal finance um, in a classroom setting. Not to mention the students who will have gone through the Office of Financial Literacy and created their own personalized financial life plan. 200 years ago, Benjamin Franklin said, a penny saved is a penny earned. But we are not talking about pennies. We are talking about thousands upon thousands of dollars for every Pepperdine student that would go through this program. There is an urgency for financial literacy that goes beyond what is offered at every institution here in the United States. Let us equip our students with the ability to manage money, have greater influence, and live lives of purpose, service, and leadership. Thank you. Center for Women in Leadership, presented by Bernice Ledbetter. Good evening. I'd like to begin with a story. It's a story about women at Pepperdine, and it's a story that begins in 1938. This is the year of our first graduating class at George Pepperdine College. You'll notice that there are four students in this cohort and one of them is a woman. That's Carmen Landrum. Carmen came from Nashville, Tennessee, all the way to Los Angeles, California to find her place at Pepperdine. While she was a student at Pepperdine, majoring in business administration, she also worked part-time as a staff member in one of the offices. When she graduated, she went on to work for George Pepperdine at Western Auto Supply, and then she would later find her career at Bank of America. I love this story because it reminds us that we have a history of supporting women in their development and in their leadership expression. Today, at Seaver College, women comprise 60% of the student body. And across our five schools, we have 4,382 women students. And within that group, we have several hundred international students coming to us mostly from China and Saudi Arabia. All of our women, staff, faculty, students, are eager to learn in order to lead. That's why they came to Pepperdine. In fact, recently, I had a conversation with one of my students from China. 
She asked me a series of questions that left me wondering, are we doing enough? She asked me, how can I lead in a country where men have most of the positions of authority and leadership? How can I lead with values in my country? How can I change my country? I think there's a role for Pepperdine to play in enabling our women's students to be prepared to lead in emerging contexts. And the world that our students enter looks something like this. About half of the labor force in most countries is comprised of women. At the same time, there's an impending labor shortage. And so research has suggested that if more women went to work, it would increase the GDP exponentially in a number of countries around the world by 9% in Brazil, all the way to 27% in India. Women's work actually creates a positive economic ripple effect. But that ripple effect begins to slow down as women move into higher levels of leadership and influence. In the Fortune 500, there are 4.6% of those companies that have a woman CEO. Here in California, we, of our 400 top companies, 14 of them are run by women. And in the field of law, 19% make it to a partner role in a large firm. Is there something Pepperdine can do to create more women leaders to move into positions of influence? I think there is. To that end, we propose the Center for Women in Leadership at Pepperdine University. So what would the center do? It would focus on leadership development for staff and students primarily so that uh, folks could learn in order to lead effectively. And we would engage faculty in conducting academic research because we would want to contribute to the literature in this emerging and important field. And in order to understand the specific leadership development gap that the center could fill, we analyzed staff climate surveys, and we also administered a survey to our women across our five schools. One of the questions that we asked in that survey was this. What do you need in order to enter your career and express leadership and feel successful? Sort of what do you need to move on into your future role? And here's what our students said. They said that they want programs outside the classroom that focus on mentoring and skills development. So let me tell you a couple of examples that we've dreamed up that we think can address these specific areas. So in the area of mentoring, we have this idea for a leadership fellows program. It would be a one-on-one -on -one mentoring relationship. Uh, it would be based on an application. Students across our five schools could participate. And the mentors would come from our senior level women leaders here at Pepperdine, many of whom are alumna. And they would meet for a, an academic term or perhaps a whole entire academic year. Our students also mentioned to us that they want more access to industry leaders. And so we came up with the idea of the industry roundtable, where small groups of women could meet with industry leaders in the fields that our students plan to go into for career development and learning and coaching. And our staff and students indicated that they want to learn more about uh, communication skills and also about building their confidence. All right, so how would the center go about doing its work? The center would serve as a network hub and a convener to make use of the resources already existing on our campuses. We would serve as partners and collaborators with offices like Career Services and Alumni Relations. And if the center is to have a long-term sustaining future, we believe that it needs to be connected to an existing entity on our campus, one that speaks to the university-wide reach that we see the center engaging in, and an entity that has access to all five schools. And we think human resources is a very viable option for that partnership. Moreover, in terms of our financial sustainability, we will partner very closely with the Office of Research and Sponsored Programs who will actively look for funding for students, staff, and faculty who are engaged in this work. We also think that we'll be able to generate income from gifts and grants and corporate sponsorships. We see the Center for Women in Leadership creating many, many benefits for Pepperdine, not the least of which is to strengthen the Pepperdine brand, which then gives rise to increased enrollments, uh, uh, raising the level of retention and supporting corporate relations. But more than that, we see the center acting in a way to support our mission, which we understand requires us to care for all in our community. 
And we realize that when we strengthen one part, we strengthen all the parts. We think the center has an important role to play in closing the gap, the leadership gap that's present here at Pepperdine and also in the organizations that our students will one day serve. We'll close that gap by increasing the leadership capacity of our students, staff, and faculty. In fact, we'll enable Pepperdine to create its own positive ripple effect by developing and sending out into the world values-based women leaders that we know the world needs very much today. But more than that, we believe that the Center for Women in Leadership has a moral responsibility to develop all leaders for lives of purpose, service, and exceptional leadership. One of my Saudi students drove this point home to me in a powerful and important way. As a uh, class assignment, uh, I asked my students to write a report on an uh, interview with an exemplary leader. And this student's report began something like this. As fate would have it, something terrible happened to me at the beginning of my life. I was born a girl. In my culture, women have fewer rights, and the roles available to us are quite limited. But I had the good fortune to be born into a family where my father believed in my dream to one day have a career, to be a leader, to own my own company. I learned from my father's example that an exemplary leader is someone that helps others find and follow their leadership aspirations and helps them develop their leadership abilities. If it hadn't been for my father, I would not be here at Pepperdine. I would suggest that many of us come to Pepperdine with a dream. For my team and myself, our dream is to support the development of all our women, staff, student, and faculty combined. We're drawing a line from our first woman graduate all the way to the present. We believe the time is now. Tomorrow may be too late. The powerful story that we have to tell is one of an enduring commitment to our students and staff and faculty women's development. To that end, we propose the development of the Center for Women in Leadership at Pepperdine University. With your help, we believe that we can make this ambitious and important and urgent goal come to pass. We believe that we can make this dream come true. Thank you so much. Developing, launching, and implementing a new degree program, Masters of Science in Applied Analytics, presented by Mark Chun. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. My name is Mark Chun, and I represent a team of 14 faculty members from the Information Systems and the Decision Sciences disciplines at the Grazie Dio School. Thank you for allowing me to be here tonight. Wayne Gretzky was the highest scoring NHL player in history. He didn't get this title because he took every opportunity to score a goal. He didn't get this title because he chased every opportunity to shoot that puck. Wayne Gretzky earned that opportunity because he understood where strategy needed to play into hockey. And what he did is, instead of chasing every single opportunity to score a goal, he understood where the puck needed to be, and he placed himself there. We at the Grazia Dio School understand that there's an opportunity for us to read what's happening in the market and to place ourselves ahead of our competitors. There's been an explosion that's happening with data in the industry. There's a lot of data that's becoming available from everything from smartphones to cloud computings to the Internet of Things that are making data readily available to every corporation. Here's the problem. Corporate executives don't know what to do with the data coming in. Hence, this is the opportunity for Pepperdine University to establish a Master's of Applied Analytics where our students will go in, be able to understand how to get data, how to analyze the data, and how to help corporate executives to make better decisions. 
In 2008, the United States as a whole only graduated 25,000 students with the ability to conduct analytical analysis for corporations. By the year 2018, in the United States alone, there will be about a half a million jobs available for students who understand how to leverage this thing called big data and how to aid organizations in making better decisions. 64% of these jobs are gonna require a master's degree. If you do a search on LinkedIn today, using the word analytics, you will find that there are over 1,700 jobs available immediately within 50 miles of Los Angeles. These statistics make us faculty really happy. Our competitors have looked at the trends that are happening in the industry as it relates to analytics, and many of them have tried to capture what's going on in the industry related to analytics, and they've launched in the last year or two uh, masters of analytics degrees. Here's my position. They got it all wrong. They got it wrong. Typically, for business schools, what we do is we offer an MBA degree that is very business focused. We train our students in a variety of disciplines from marketing to strategy to finance, accounting, information, decision sciences, to build a very well-rounded professional that should be able to address business issues. Our competitors are offering their analytics degrees, and what they're doing is they are targeting just the traditional, very technical skills for analytical degrees. Again, we at Pepperdine think that they're getting it wrong. We understand where the market is heading, and what we want to do is position ourselves in this sweet spot here. We want to launch a Master's of Applied Analytics position, a degree that would teach our students both the business aspects, the methodology, the ways of collecting business, in addition to training them with statistical tools so that they would have a great combination of both business and technical skills that will allow them to be marketable immediately. Our program design is complete. We've worked very hard in coming up with courses that would allow our students, again, to be trained in both the business and the technical aspects of this analytical degree. President Benton, thank you. You recently gave all of the semifinalists the opportunity to further develop our program. What we've done is we've taken President Benton's seed money and we held industry analysts, uh, industry expert panel sessions. We brought in our friends. We brought in people who support Pepperdine University. We brought in people who will be hiring Pepperdine University graduates. We brought in people from the US White House, from NBC, ABC, Salesforce. And what we've done is we presented our program to them and we've asked them, are we on the right track? And guess what their answer was? We're on the right track. Tonight, Pepperdine, we are requesting the maximum of $150,000 to fund the launch of our Masters of Science in Applied Analytics. In year one, as you can already imagine, the cost to launch a master's program is very expensive. We're anticipating it's gonna cost about $335,000 in the first year to launch this degree. Years two, on, we're anticipating that the cost to maintain this program is gonna be about $195,000. The good news is the revenues. We anticipate that there will be anywhere from 1.68 million to 3.38 million dollars for additional revenue for Pepperdine University. Can I repeat that again? there will be an additional anticipated 1.68 conservative number to an anticipated $3.38 million additional revenue from Pepperdine University. This should make everybody happy, right? Because of you, Pepperdine, we will launch a Master's of Science in Applied Analytics that will train our students in different aspects from sports analytics, to supply chain analytics, 
to healthcare analytics and big data analytics. Because of you, Pepperdine, oops, because of you, Pepperdine, we will continue to develop our students in the Masters of Applied Analytics and be able to place our students in prestigious local, national, and international companies. We will increase the footprint of Pepperdine University globally. We've already uh, have commitments from many of these companies that they will hire our Masters of Science of Applied Analytics students if we are able to successfully launch this. Because of you, Pepperdine, we are able to innovate. Thank you. The award for the People's Choice goes to the Financial Literacy Initiative, Derek Stoutman. already has fans. <laughs> the first award, the first, and these are significant awards again this year, the first award goes to the Masters of Science in Applied Analytics by <laughs> Professor Mark Chung. The second award goes to the group that produced and presented the Center for Women in Leadership for $148,000. And I just want to be clear, I, I'm not sure that you all heard the announcement. Dr. Chun's award was for $150,000. Dr. Ledbetter's award was for $148,000. And the final award for $109,000 goes to the Financial Literacy Initiative. Well, folks, um, as I said, they were all good. A lot, a lot of energy and time and enthusiasm went into the proposals, and those are difficult choices. But those three uh, awards are funded for this round. Uh, we're going to take uh, a year off, and so those of you that uh, are thinking about ideas, um, that proposals will be open again starting in spring 2016 with a fall deadline that same year. So two years from right now, we will be doing this again. Start thinking, start collaborating, start building partnerships. Good things, many good things have come out of last year's funded awards, and certainly we expect many good things to come out of the awards that were funded this year. Thanks so much for being here. The basketball game is tied 14 to 14, <laughs> and I encourage you to head that direction immediately. Thanks very much. <laughs>